Oh my god, man, this game's insane. When I'm not jumping over deer in the wild or soaring through the air like an eagle, I'm completely breaking it down in the club with my best friends. The repair tool. It's not meant to be used as a weapon. See, the repair tool in Far Cry 3 is used to fix broken cars along the long stretches of dirt road, to make families happy and fix someone's bad day. But more importantly, it can be used to destroy things, to burn people alive. So, can you beat Far Cry 3 with only the repair tool? Let's find out, baby. My journey started with me being in a hostage situation and getting lectured on the definition of insanity for 20 minutes. Shit. Holy fuck, he's dead. What? Really? That's all it took to kill him. Hey, yo, you know this, boy, he's got his free taco. Holy fuck, he's dead. Holy fuck, he's dead. Anyway, my cold-blooded brother Grant and I knew we had to get the heck out of this place if we were ever gonna save our friends. So we snuck by the guards who had Stevie Wonder's vision, watched the gay pride parade on TV, and finally got out of that nightmare. <laughs> yep, that's me. All my life, I seem to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. You're probably wondering how I ended up in that situation. Well, it all started in the summer of 86. Run, Forrest! Run! Before I could even get my hands on a repair tool, a guy jumped me in the forest, forcing me to act in self-defense. I then proceeded to teabag him in self-defense. I also stole his wallet in self-defense. I crossed a squeaky old bridge, ended up falling into the nearby river, and here's where it all started. Luckily, my boy Dennis pulled me out of the river like a baby out of the womb, and I woke up to him non-consensually giving me a tatau. Unfortunately, I couldn't buy the repair tool just yet because I was poor as heck, and before I could even start my adventure, Dennis told me to go fix a nearby radio tower. Now, normally this wouldn't be a problem, except for the fact that there's a fucking snake guarding the stairs. <gasps> Homie, how much they pay you for this? Jesus Christ. It's a, a snake security guard. That's crazy. I tried my best to jump over the little guy, but he still got me. Look, I may have aggressively thrown him to the ground, but look! He's still alive, so I'm good. I only abuse animals if they abuse me first. So boom, radio tower fixed. Boom, $400 in my bank account. Boom, repair tool in my inventory. Immediately, we have a problem. Hunting. Sure, animals that attack me are pretty easy to defeat. I just sit there burning them alive, healing every so often, and eventually they give up on life. But animals that run away? They're damn near impossible to kill with the repair tool. I mean, I tried setting buildings on fire to try and get the animals caught in the blaze, but they actually had a brain and ran away from the fire. It's not all bad though. Luckily, every enemy in this game has a health bar that doesn't seem to regenerate. What this means is I can sneak up behind an unsuspecting animal, burn it for a second or two before it runs away, causing, let's say, 10% damage, and I can just keep repeating this over and over again until they fall dead. That doesn't mean I was able to catch piggies or deer though. They were pretty much impossible to hunt. By the way, if you guys are enjoying this video, subscribe to my channel. This just makes sure you don't miss any videos I do since, you know, I only upload once every couple of years. Now I know what you really want me to talk about. Enemies. Were they hard to kill? Or could I just bust into any random camp with my muscles gleaming and my testosterone exfoliating my skin, taking everyone out in a blaze of glory? Uh, both. See, right now, I'm weak as heck. A level one. An absolute soy boy. But as I progress through the game, I will become stronger. I will get more tatows, and I will become the ultimate killing machine. But for now, I just had to cuck my enemies. It wasn't a very honorable way to beat my foes, but it worked, goddammit. The good news is, when I started burning them with my torch, they couldn't fight back at all. So the moment I had someone in my grasp, they were a goner. And so I became the repair tool strangler, burning anybody who looked at me the wrong way. People knew that if they saw a guy with a repair tool, they were about to be sent to the afterlife. Evil people, innocent people, heck, even my friends. No one was safe from my insanity. But at this point, I realized I needed a bigger wallet. The soy boy wallet I picked up on my journey just wasn't cutting it, and the only way to upgrade it was to kill a goat. And it wasn't any ordinary goat. It was one of the mountain goats. Now, I'm not kidding when I say I was hunting this damn goat for 10 minutes. That may not seem like a lot, but 10 minutes of just chasing a goat unsuccessfully with a repair tool feels like five hours. I was getting tired, cranky, and I had enough of the goat's BS. I was about ready to give up when God answered my prayers. He sent an angel to me in the form of a truck, which ended up annihilating the goat on the dirt path. It was a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. The funny thing was, not a single car drove down that road for the next five minutes I stayed there. The timing was just... Mwah. Believe it or not, I'm a good guy. Sure, I, I may kill the odd innocent person for no other reason than to have a good laugh, but every now and then, 
I'd become a superhero. It was time to save my friends. No more fooling around, it was time to become a man and do my duty. Luckily, this creepy old man kidnapped my friend Daisy and was keeping her nice and safe in his house. He was truly a man of honor, and I saluted him. He wanted me to gather some mushrooms to wake her up, and let's just say... I shouldn't have tried the product before getting it to her. I will never come back from seeing Voss stripping. When I got back to the house later that night, Daisy wanted to know where Grant was. Grant was her boyfriend after all, so she had the right to know what had happened to him. I told her that Grant had a horribly traumatic and painful death and that he probably got eaten by Voss's dogs, but I promised her I'd get revenge for all of us, and that's what I planned to do. It was showtime. My boy Dennis let me know about some intel I could get at a nearby shipwreck, and my skills were really going to be pushed to their limits here. The repair tool isn't a stealth weapon. When people burn alive, they tend to scream, and screaming people bring attention. Must have been the wind. Normally this isn't a problem, but this was a stealth mission, which means the moment I'm seen, the mission fails. So I had to lead every single enemy away from the camp with rocks, burn them alive in a remote pocket of the beach, and then continue this until everyone was dead. It wasn't the most fun mission in the world, but it was doable. Then, reinforcements. The boys squared up on the beach and they had me surrounded. Luckily, I had one thing these losers couldn't even comprehend infinite health. Sure, I had to take some time to heal, but as long as I took one guy out at a time and didn't completely throw myself into a firefight, I was a pretty good little assassin. And so I left that beach with 30 more kills to my name and a smile on my face. It was Voss's turn. He had the audacity to kidnap my super hot girlfriend and I wasn't gonna take that. Infiltrating his camp was a lot harder than I thought it was, so instead of doing it the cool guy way and annihilating everyone in the camp, I just sprinted past everyone and got to the door in 30 seconds. I quickly found out I had been bamboozled. My girlfriend wasn't here. It was just a spooky guy waiting in the corner. Oh. Voss started having a temper tantrum like usual and tried to burn me alive, but because he's so low IQ, we were able to easily escape. Here, I had to use my knife on the pipes. Trust me, I tried jumping through the fire and tried attacking the pipe with my repair tool, but nothing worked. These water pipes had to be either shot or knifed, and that really disappointed me. So here we were. My girlfriend and I trapped on top of a burning building with nowhere left to go. It's the only way down, come on! I bet. Oh my God. Here comes the first mandatory shooting section. Lisa is driving the car while I'm forced to shoot at the enemies to survive. Or, actually scratch that. You don't need to shoot the enemies at all. I mean, look at this! The bad guys were killing themselves and I didn't even have to lift a finger! They made Spongebob look like a good driver. Well, there was one part where I was forced to use my handgun to proceed, but other than that, I literally just sat in the back of the truck and healed away. I took Lisa to the creepy old man's house, watched Daisy do some real top-notch work on the escape boat, and then booked it out of that depressing cave. Two friends down, three more to go. It was time to meet Citra, the leader of the Rakyat and Voss's sister. She spiked my drink, which gave me tons of weird visions, and I woke up to the most beautiful face in the universe. Hi. Okay. Oh, and of course he was giving me another Tatao. Christ, man, this guy has a problem. This isn't a goddamn sleepover, Dennis. Stop drawing on me when I pass out. He's like that creepy uncle that comes into your room at night, but instead of diddling your doodle, he gives you tatows. I was starting to get sick of Dennis. Sure, he saved my life and his fashion sense was off the chain, but he completely ignored my personal boundaries and I hated him for it. Anyway, I went off to find Buck, the guy who was touching Keith's doodle. On my journey to find Keith, I ended up coming across a couple of bros who needed their Jeep repaired. This piece of junk crept out on me. Think you can fix it? My man, you're in luck! All I have is a repair tool. Like the good Samaritan I am, I fixed their car. At that moment, an angry pack of dogs crept out from under the bridge. No way in hell was I dying today. So as one of the guys was getting mauled, I stole the car I had just repaired and narrowly escaped with my life. And I kid you not, 20 seconds down this road, I found another group of guys needing a repair job. Thank goodness, now I could properly atone for the sin of stealing the last guy's car and leaving him for dead. That was a close one. Every man for themselves! See ya! Okay, you know what? I'm sick of being a good person. All it ever does is backfire, so no more. I'm doing things my way from now on. Speaking of which, my next mission was to follow this guy named Willis. He was the secret agent and would lead me straight to Buck. I just had to follow him unnoticed. Luckily, Willis is like an ostrich. As long as you can't see him, he can't see you. You have 10 seconds to tell me who you are before I remotely detonate the C4 under the table and this whole place explodes like a pop bottle. 
Okay, he apparently he saw me. So yeah, Willis and I became the best of friends. He gave me a flamethrower to burn some baby Christmas trees, and I was like, nah man, that's alright. I got my trusty repair tool. That's right, I didn't need that loser flamethrower to burn down the Christmas tree plantations. My repair tool could set anything I wanted on fire. I went from plantation to plantation burning anything into everything. I was the fucking Grinch who stole Christmas, dancing on the mountainside watching the world burn. The final bit of this mission was to blow up an escaping boat with an RPG, and there's no other way to go about it. Trust me, I somehow miraculously made it onto the boat several times, but there's some kind of invisible barrier or something that throws you off the boat. I didn't even have the chance to set it on fire, so after 30 minutes of failed attempts, I threw in the towel and blew it up the old-fashioned way. I watched this island's version of the Olympics, and it was my job to save the lone survivor. His name was Rongo, and it was my job to protect him while he searched for Buck's location. At this point, I was the goddamn Terminator. It was gonna take a literal gorilla to take me out, so these puny humans had no chance. I laughed as man after man was set on fire, and even as the last man collapsed from third degree burns, my bloodlust still wasn't quenched. I was... I was turning into a monster. I hadn't even realized how many men I had killed until I saw the bodies piled up in front of me. Who have I become? Next up was Ollie, the frat bro. He was getting sold for top dollar, but I wanted him all for myself. So unfortunately, this part forces you to use a sniper rifle. Was it worth it to save Ollie's life? <laughs> no, probably not. But hey, at least we got to see more idiot enemies commit Sudoku. Oh no! Oh god! Hello? <laughs> Buck. Look at the absolute masculinity. I really didn't want to fight the guy, but since he was diddling Keith's doodle, I kinda had to step in. He made me go on an easter egg hunt for an ancient knife, and I gotta say, it was a lot more trouble than it was worth. After going through cave after cave after cave, I finally found the knife. I liked Buck, but he was starting to remind me of Dennis. I was getting sick of his bullshit. One easter egg hunt is fun enough, but three? That's enough to make any men go crazy. I needed to make a statement. So I got in a car and crashed into Buck's front wall. I might have accidentally killed one of his chickens as well, but that's not important. I went in there, asserted my dominance, and demanded to see Keith. But to my surprise, Buck didn't fight me. In fact, he gave me the key and was like, alright homie, go get your friend. You know, maybe I judged Buck before I got to know him, but I spoke too soon. He trapped us in a room, grabbed his crotch, and told us that we were his new toys. You have to understand, there was nothing I could do about that. No Uno reverse card in the world was powerful enough to reflect that manly crotch grab. Just kidding! He was friggin' easy! You're not gonna touch Keith's doodle anymore, Buck. He's my toy now. Jason, you gotta get me out of here. I'm begging you, please. You gotta get me out of here, man. Look at me. Look me in the fucking eye. Eye! You fuck! Look me in the eye! You're my bitch! I brought Keith home, and he told me that my younger brother Riley was dead, aka the last friend to rescue on my list. Was it one brother enough? I'll get them. All of them. I swear. Hey. Jason, what's wrong? Fuck you. Damn! Oh my god! She got a booty so nice, you pinched that twice. Riley was dead. Sure, we could leave this crazy island once and for all, but I needed that sweet revenge. One brother was bad enough, but two? No. I got some intel that some locals were kidnapped in a local enemy caravan, and it was my job to save them. Right when I thought I had rescued them, Voss bamboozled me again, explained to me how he got his scars, and then shot me in the chest. As I birthed myself from a pile of dead bodies, I started to really regret coming to this stupid island. Sure, it was fun setting innocent people on fire and flying around the atmosphere like Superman, but somewhere between almost getting my doodle diddled and having to crawl out of a pit of dead bodies was where I drew the line. Voss had to go. I mean, well, first I had to defeat a demon and bang Voss's sister, but it was all part of the plan. I gave the most epic speech of my entire life. I'm gay. Burned a guy who didn't know he was getting burned until it was too late, and finally made it to Voss's hideout. Also, can we just talk about the sniper guy who's immune to fire? You know, I thought I was big brain with the way I set his tree on fire since I couldn't reach him physically, but nah man, he was fireproof. Voss. The best villain in all the Far Cry games. It hurt my soul to kill him, it really did. But it was the only way to continue on with the challenge. 
Dennis seemed upset and he was super drunk. He told me that we weren't best friends anymore since I did the naughty with Citra and he gave me back my best friend bracelet. I mean, technically I just woke up with her on top of me and... Wait a minute. That's right! I was drugged and woke up to her assaulting me. I mean, it's okay because she's super hot, but still. What's with these crazy people doing things to me without my consent? Jesus Christ. At this point, I was too far gone. With all the horrors I had committed, from burning innocent people alive to teabagging dead enemies, I knew my place was on this island. So it was time to say goodbye to my friends. They didn't belong here. They had to get out, and besides, I still needed to get rid of Hoyt, the last big boss on my journey. Lisa was flipping out. I mean, it was understandable, she was my girlfriend. But I was a big boy now, and I had to make my own decisions. Daisy held her as she cried, and I felt like a complete piece of garbage. Immediately after that, I had a flashback of the craziest time of my life. Look at them go! Holy Christ, the dance floor is on fire! And they say white people can't dance. My man's over here doing the robot. But no time to get distracted. Operation Riley. Willis had told me that he got intel about my younger brother being alive and he said Hoyt had him. After helping Willis repair his plane, he flew me to the other island and I took flight to the skies like a squirrel. Oh, by the way, uh, juggernauts weren't even a problem. Sure, they took a lot of my health and I'd have to use the super health hypo, but just like every other enemy, they had a health bar, so after enough burning, they'd eventually catch on fire. Since my new best friend slot was open, what with Dennis breaking up with me and all, I decided to let Sam fill that hole in my life. And not like buck filling holes, I mean filling metaphorical holes, like the hole in my heart. Sam and I were getting along real well until- OH MY GOD! Jesus Christ, Sam, no! Sam! Oh, somebody do CPR! The last half of the game is pretty trash. There's a few times I failed the challenge over here, you know, getting the recruit uniform and having to use my knife, having to use the big machine gun on the helicopter with Riley, stuff like that. There's no point in me going over this stuff. I know I kind of speed ran the last half of the game, but this video is getting way too long. So yeah, I turned Hoyt into a homemade cross, had one of the coolest chase scenes of my life, saved Riley, and made it back to the creep's house to find out that my friends had all been kidnapped again. And it was by none other than Citra and Dennis. Those little snakes. They were supposed to be my friends, and they do this to me? Riley and I went to get them back, but Citra was ready for me. She bamboozled me with some homemade sleepy powder, and it was up to me to push through it to save my friends. I walked through the seven layers of hell, picked up the magical blue knife, and woke up to find myself ready to kill Lisa. But I was too strong for that. Not today. I saved my friends and told Citra to suck my nuts. But oh no! One of her tier 3 subs approached and started defending her. He told me how I couldn't speak to his queen that way and went to kill me when all of a sudden, I dodged behind Citra. Dennis fell for the oldest trick in the book, the sidestep. As Citra started to bleed out on the cold, hard ground, she told me that she loved me and that she forgave me for getting her killed. I started to see the life drain from her eyes and then, it was over. As she died in my arms, Dennis began to understand the irreversible mistake he had made and started to break down crying, begging Citra to come back. But it was too late. She was gone, and it was all Dennis's fault. But somehow, I didn't feel bad. All Citra and Dennis had been doing to me the whole journey was assaulting me, making me feel bad, and forcing me to do things I didn't want to do. My friends were there for me the whole time, motivating me to continue on, giving me support and helping me to rescue the others. They didn't deserve to die. They didn't do anything wrong. So in the end, I think I made the right choice. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to me because I make new gaming challenge videos at least once a year, and don't forget to click that bell. If you don't click that bell, you pretty well aren't subscribed to me, so make sure you click that bell. Also, announcement alert! My friends over at Cinemassacre just released an awesome new game on Steam and Nintendo Switch called The Angry Video Game Nerd 1 and 2 Deluxe. They've been working on it for a few years now, so it's a pretty big deal. Check out the link in the description down below if you're interested. And no, I'm not sponsored. They're just my homies. Thanks for watching. Check out my many other gaming challenge videos on my channel, and I'll see you. Thick boys! In my next video. Answer the question.